Hi guys, welcome to Code Problem Solution with me, Khomet Rampikili. Today we're working on learning an amazing technique. This technique, we will be changing the order of characters in a given string. Basically, we'll be reversing a string. This technique helps you understand the swapping of characters around. Don't forget that you can also send in your problem questions on our email address, gg.intehelang at gmail.com and we can have your problem solved here together explaining it as we work. We are working on an online compiler today as well and I will clear off whatever we have here as default to this compiler. Hashtag include. This is a way of including a standard or your user defined file in a program. Our stream in this case is our file. Or you could say it's a file inclusive directive that speaks to your C processor. You see the file included here being your IO stream. So this hashtag include is led by the preprocessor and it instructs it to insert the content of whatever user defined header file in our C program. For IO stream, the preprocessor is told to enable you to use your C in and your C out keywords, which enable you to input and to output. For our session today, we will be working on reversing a string. We need a header file contained by C++ that enables us to work with our strings. So we must tell the preprocessor to bring it in. Hashtag include string. Using namespace. I have a video where I explained well in detail, but I'll just give a brief with an example. Suppose for this code session, we want to create a user-defined function and we call it game. But then the C++ has a C++ predefined keyword or a function which has the same name, game. The compiler gets confused as to which game is being called. Now to combat that, we use this using namespace std line. Great. Now to our driving function, the main function. For our session today, we are just reversing your word. And first thing to do before performing any operation is to declare the variables we will be using to hold whatever value in this code. For the purpose of this session, we are prompting user for input of a string, and the string must be output as well, being reversed. So we need variables which will hold the input string and the output string. Now we have variables to hold whatever data is driven from this code. Let's get the input from the user to enable us to perform operations on it. C out. Now to read this input, we don't use C in as we would for other data types. This is because unlike your integers, floating points and characters, strings can be so long and take up to the next row. C in doesn't read to the next row. Now to enable for us to read a string, we have a predefined function within C++ that enables us to read that string. This function is found in the header file string, which we've already declared. This function is get line. Great, now we've prompted our user for input. Now to perform the reverse operations on this input. For the purpose of this code, we will use a user-defined function to reverse the string. To explain further on this user-defined content, this function is user-defined because we will create how the reversing happens. Unlike the function getLine, you just called it and it knows it will read input. It's built in C++. This one is yours. You're creating it. You must define how it works, how it does the, the reversing. Hence, it's user defined. Now, just as before working with any other variable, you need to declare it first. That is the same with functions. Our function operates on a string and as such returns a string. And the name of the function with the parenthesis. That is the function declaration. Thus far, we have declared our function, prompted user input, and that's it. That function call is just declared, so let's call it in the main function so that it can run. Now we'll be moving to this function to reverse our string, but we have not told it which string to reverse. In here, where we call the user function, we will throw within the parenthesis this user input 
so that it go to reverse it. But now you must be seeing an error in each of our code. When we declared this function, we didn't tell it that in the parenthesis there will be some data. And this is what is called function overloading. Because in the declaration, you tell the compiler how the variable or your function will look like. So here, the function declared has nothing in the parenthesis. We've now overloaded it when we got to call it. Now we have called our function. So the code when run will prompt the user input and then it will run the reverse function. But we still have not built the reverse function. We've only declared it and called it in the main function. So now let's build it. To avoid that overload on the declaration, we declare this input data type in the parenthesis at the declaration as well. Now, in this function, we need to return the reversed function. So let's firstly declare the variable that will hold the output. We already have the input declared in the parenthesis, and that's what the parenthesis is for, to hold your input. Now declare this output. And this function is returning this string output. So let's return it. the real logic building begins remember we are swapping characters here let's use an example just to explain this suppose we are reversing the string pass we're going to read the length of the string and say okay word pass has letters length four now let's count from letter four now now let's count from letter four and start storing the reversed string on this new variable at letter four we have s and let's take this S and store it on the reversed string variable. We're decrementing the length. And now at length 3, we have another S. Let's take this S and store it on the reversed string variable. We decrement the length. And now we're at letter 2. We have an A. Let's take this A and store it on the reversed string variable. We decrement the length. And now we're at letter 1. We have letter P. Let's take this p and store it on the reversed string variable. Now we have our reverse string. We see ssap reverse for pass. Now let's build the logic for this one code. We've already said we are counting from the last character to, of the string. C++ has already in it a user-defined function called length, and it reads the number of the characters. But now here's another thing to take note of. We are working with string, and just as if you were working with an array. Your character positions count starts from a zero. What do I mean by that? Suppose we have letter pass. The letter P is on position zero, and the letter A is on position one, and the letter S is on position two, and the last letter S is on position three. Hmm, meaning that whatever length you have, you will have to subtract it. You will have to subtract from it one so that you can read the specific letter accordingly. I hope you're still following. We're counting for position four to zero, so the last number is zero and it's a decrement of the variable count now let's create the body of our loop the reverse string will be stored on this variable the plus sign is a string concatenation operator that permits us to thread together literals and variables into a single string. And letters of the initial string will be stored as the count decreases. When length is 3, the letters stored here at length 2, the storing, length 1, and that of 0. And that is it. When we call this function in the main function, it will reverse this input string for us. However, because this is just the value returning function, it does not display.
meaning that we need to use a display function to display the output from the reverse function, the see out function. Alternatively, you can use this function call, storing it on that user output declaration we have and see out that user output. Now let's run our code to test its correctness. Oh, we have an error on line seven. We didn't mention that this is the main function. We also have an error on line 28. Oh, the naming on line 28 is not as it was one declaration. Right now, let's clear and run. Now, no errors. Let's enter our input. Let's use pass as we've been using it. Great. We have our letter pass rest. Let's use a different string for the next example. My name. Great! I always get excited whenever we find solutions to whatever problem we have. This was amazing. I hope it makes sense to you. If you're still struggling a bit, just keep constantly repeating this video. I know, I trust that it will eventually make sense, but there would be no mistake, no wrong in you reaching out to me on our email address, gg.ntehelangegmail.com. I love hearing from you. And don't forget to tell more of your friends and more of your friends to come on here to learn more of the coding problem. See you on the next video.